Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, you will learn about AWS services. Today, we are going to talk about AWS Glue Data Quality, which has been recently announced in AWS reInvent um, event happening in Las Vegas. So let's get started. So let's try to understand first what exactly we are trying to solve here. So when you are trying to build a data lake, Data quality is your biggest challenge because you're sourcing data, you're uh, hydrating data, ingesting data from various data sources, and you want to make sure that you are, your data quality remains, uh, remains intact, remains as per defined the schema. Because if you are uh, sourcing or hydrating uh, um, a data which is not maintaining the data quality, then when it comes to consuming the, uh, the data, whether it, you are trying to create any curated data out of it, or if you're trying to consume your data for say machine learning or uh, reports or dashboards purposes, then even quality of that outcome will be affected. So when you're trying to ingest data, into data lake, it is very important that you monitor and control data quality there because if data quality drops there, you will see data quality uh, related issues or challenges coming in upstream as well, whether you're trying to prepare data for any consumption or whether you're consuming data for any report dashboard or machine learning purposes. So, how do we solve this data quality challenge? Uh, the answer is AWS Glue Data Quality, which has been recently announced in uh, reInvent um, in Las Vegas. Um, just to give you a summary about this, and we are going to talk about this data quality in more detail, it is a serverless managed service uh, provided by AWS Glue. It uh, uses one of the open source uh, framework DQ, uh, so it's built on top of that, and it can work at two levels. It can look at data quality at rest. It can also look at data quality in move. So when I say data quality in move, that means when you're trying to say ingest your data in that glue job itself, in that pipeline itself, you can check the data quality before doing anything about it. So it can do data quality uh, check or monitoring at two levels. So what are the building blocks for uh, using um, AWS Glue Data Quality? AWS do Glue Data Quality works at the catalog level. So cataloging is, is the most fundamental thing, is the very first thing you have to do. And as I have mentioned earlier also in my various um, uh, tutorials that uh, the cataloging is also important if you want to make your data searchable and discoverable. So starting point of using data quality is cataloging your data. Once you catalog your data, then you need to define certain rule set. So when you're defining data quality, uh, uh, checking data quality, you might want to create certain rules based on which you want to, um, based on which you want to uh, check the quality of the data. Um, the rules could be based on the value of the data. It could be based on uh, format of the data. It can also be based on statistics of the data. So how do I create this rule set? There are two approaches to create the rules set. First one is that you can manually create a rule set and that is created using uh, a language called DQDL. D -D -L. DQDL stands for data quality definition language. So you can, I will look into some of these details later as well. But one approach is to manually create this rule set. The other approach is that you can run a rule set recommendation task and that task can create a rule set for you. And then that rule set then you can use as it is or you can modify that rule set based on your business needs and, uh, and then use it. But a rule set is the other building blocks when you're trying to use data quality. So, if you move on, so once you have a rule set, then you need to run the rule set because when you run the rule set, you check, uh, you assess the quality of the data. 
So when you're trying to um, assess the quality of data at rest, then you can run a, a task called data quality evaluation task. And if you, do, if you run this evaluation task, this task will actually check your data against the rule set, and then it will write the outcome outcome. Uh, An outcome it can write at two places. You can ask uh, 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 it were uh, data quality evolution tasks to publish the matrices to CloudWatch log so that you can read the events in the CloudWatch log about the data quality and can write some follow-up uh, automation or workflow. You can also write the outcome or output in a S3 bucket. So both outcomes you can do I mean, you can choose either to do CloudWatch or S3, or you can do both as well. So one way, one flow is that once your rule set is ready, you can run an evolution task. Uh, and evolution task is used to monitor data quality at rest. In addition to that, you can also use um, you can also use uh, something called evaluate data quality action, and this action you can configure as a part of your ETL job, uh, your glue job, uh, and you can use this uh, data quality action uh, to um, to check the quality of data against the rule set on the fly in the job. And again, in this case as well, you can write your outcome to both CloudWatch and S3 bucket. So basically, uh, there are four major blocks. One is the catalog itself, uh, which is the starting point for um, uh, defining the data quality uh, rule set. So then you define the rule set. Then you can run your rule set in two ways, whether at rest or in move. And then finally, the assessment of the assessment based on the rule set is uh, written to S3 bucket. And matrices of the data quality can be published to CloudWatch, uh, CloudWatch log, so that you can then fill, uh, build a follow up workflow to take it forward. So. Having understood these building blocks, let's try to understand how you can define this rule set because that seems to have the crux of everything. So rule sets are defined using DQDL, which is data quality definition language. Here I am showing some of the examples um, 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 uh, what you can define. So basically what you create, you create an array of rule sets. So for instance, this one saying is that my data should have my row count between certain range. Um, my order number table should be complete. That means there should not be any missing values, any null values there. This one is saying that my order number uh, standard deviation should be sub between certain range. Um, you can also define rule rules based on um, uh, column values. You can make rules based on uniqueness. For instance, this one is saying that my sales column should be unique for more than 95% of the rows. So these are few examples. It's not the complete rule set. There are total 18 different types of rule you can define at this point of time. And I'm showing in the coming days and weeks and months uh, that rule set or rule, rules type will, uh, will grow. Uh, but you can define these different types of rule sets. So one way is that you can manually create these rules. Like, I, like the example I showed you here, you can simply go and uh, manually write these rules. The other way is that you can also use a wizard. So it provides a rule builder interface. And through that rule builder interface, you can drag and drop your rules. You can add your rules and then you can customize your rules to create your rule set. And again, uh, it, uh, rule builder also uses DQDL. So, uh, so this is how you create the rule set. It, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, of course, a new way of syntax you have to learn, but basically if you use a rule builder, then it will create a template for you. All you have to do is simply go and change, uh, update the column name and change the values which you want to set up for your uh, rule set. So I'm not I'm not listed all the 18 rule sets over here, but you might want to go through the documentation and, and, and understand what those 18 different rule sets are or rule types are. Uh, so moving on, uh, so how do I handle data quality at rest? So um, as I mentioned earlier, that data quality of re at rest can be um, monitored uh, using evaluation task, um, and you can 
implement this flow in various way. I'm just giving one example over here. Okay, so I'm, what I'm showing here is not something like recommended by anyone, uh, but it's just giving one simple example how you can do it. But uh, but you can you can monitor uh, or you can configure it in other ways as well. So as I said, your starting point is your glue uh, catalog. Uh, you define a rule set on that glue catalog, uh, the rules against which you want to check the data quality. Then you can start this evaluation task because when data quality at rest, you start an evaluation task. And this evaluation task, you can start using a Lambda function. And this Lambda function, you can schedule. You can say, you know what, runs once in a day on my data and tell me how is my data quality. Uh, so this Lambda function can uh, use this Glue API start data quality rule set evaluation run. And this can be used to run a particular rule set. And of course, then the output of the rule set is written into S3 bucket and cl or CloudWatch log, which then you can use for reporting purposes or uh, to uh, define any kind of alerts or notification or any other workflow you want to build on top of that. So handling data quality of at rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, you first define the rule set and then you simply run the evaluation task on a schedule. And in this case, I'm using Lambda to run that scheduled job. Again, this is just one way of doing it. You can define it, uh, you can um, make it work through other ways as well, depending on your business logic or depending on how you want to um, assess and monitor data quality at rest. Moving on, you can also handle data quality in move. And this one is even more straightforward because when you're talking about data quality in move, basically you're saying that can I, in my ETL job, put an action, put an a step, which can be used to assess my data quality? And the answer is yes. Uh, this is an example of a Glue job, um, which I have taken uh, a screen from um, a Glue Studio. You can see I'm capturing my, my reading my data from the data catalog. Then I am calling this action called evaluate data quality, uh, uh, the step at which I want to evaluate, evaluate the quality of my data. And once I'm happy with that, then I am doing some transformation. And then I'm writing my output output uh, to the S3 bucket. So this is one example how you can create a glue job in which you can simply call this evaluate uh, data quality step or action to check the quality of data at any point of time. Well, you can do it at any stage if you want, uh, you want to do, but here in this example, I'm showing that I'm reading data from the source, checking the data quality, and once I'm happy, then only I'm doing anything else. Now, you get few more options when you're trying to assess data quality at move. So I already talked about that you can use uh, Amazon CloudWatch log as an output location, or you can use uh, write it to S3 bucket. Uh, in addition to that, you, are, you can also fail the job when data quality fails. So for instance, if uh, this task is giving an output that, hey, data quality um, um, uh, has failed. Suppose you expected uh, five columns, but uh, there are seven columns. Uh, then in that case, you can say, guess what? Um, my data quality uh, uh, rules has failed and I don't want to run this job any mail, so, uh, anymore. So you can fail the job. So the job will not perform any, uh, any, any um, uh, upstream uh, actions, any downstream actions, I mean. Now, in addition to that, uh, this data quality task can uh, basically output two things. It can output the original data. Uh, so the same data it is reading, it can sim simply output that one. Or it can also output data quality results. So it's up to you how do you want to, what do you want to configure for the output and how you want to handle it. Most important thing here to understand is that you do have an option to fail the job if data quality has failed. So you can really stop the pipeline if data quality is not meeting. Or you can say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to assess my data quality, still write it to the S3 bucket, but I want to publish it to the CloudWatch log and let people be notified that some bad data has come. Okay. So few limitations which are there at present, which you should know. 
um, and I'm sure these things will change uh, in the coming time, but uh, that's what we have at this point of time from the limitations point of view. First of all, this uh, this service is still under preview, so it's uh, uh, available in only some limited regions as mentioned over here. Right now, uh, you can define data quality or use data quality only with S3 based data sources, nothing more than that. Uh, it works only with Glue 3.0, okay, the other versions are not supported and data quality rules cannot evaluate nested or list type data sources at this point of time so if you have nested structure then it cannot uh, it cannot evaluate it at this point of time so that's pretty much what we see limitation at at this point of time so what are we going to see in the demo today? So we'll see two demo. One is data at rest. So um, we'll have a data quality, data catalog table. And that will generate a rule set. And then we'll simply run an evaluation task from the console. This whole demo will happen from the console to show you how you can use data quality. But as I mentioned in my previous slide, you can also use Lambda function to call this evaluation task. And I mentioned the API name over there. It's pretty straightforward. Simply call that API, mention the rule set name, and then you are, you are good to go. And I'm also going to create a small glue job where I will show data quality, quality evaluation uh, uh, in the move. So let's move on to the demo. So here I'm in uh, AWS Glue console. And what I'm going to, uh, what I've configured over here is that I have S3 bucket where I have created three folders over here. Uh, data quality folder where I can use it for outputting my data quality results. Output folder which I can use an output location for my ETL job. And sales folder is where I have put um, uh, sales.csv file which I'm using uh, as my source data, as my um, data catalog. So here is my S3 bucket, my, my sales folder where I've got sales.csv file. Now, if I go to Glue console, in the Glue console, I have used crawler to crawl, catalog my sales data. You can see my sales data is cataloged. And if I if I go uh, further uh, down over here, I can see the schema of my uh, catalog. Uh, so you can see here that it's showing that um, there are total 15 columns, and these are the names of the columns and uh, uh, their data types. So now, what I can do, I can start working on uh, data quality at rest part first. So I can go to my data quality uh, from here and I can do from the previous screen as well. And first I need to create a rule set, but I'm not going to uh, create a rule set manually here. I'm going to simply generate a rule set. So I will simply say, hey, I want to recommend a rule set here. So it will ask what is the rule set you want to create. I'll say this is my uh, sales demo, uh, demo rule set say which IAM role uh, I'm going to use one of my existing IAM role but uh, if you go and see documentation in documentation it talks about what exactly what exact permission you need to give to this particular role in order to run this uh, data quality recommendation uh, task uh, a rule set recommendation task so let me uh, say click recommend rule set so what it's going to do is that it is running a recommendation task and when this task uh, will finish what will happen is that uh, you will see uh, a rule set created over here which you can simply use as it is or you can modify it and uh, and use the modified version so let's wait when this task finishes and it has generated the rule set Okay, so you can see the recommendation task has has completed. So now if I go and refresh my rule set tab over here, I can see there is a rule set which is generated by this recommendation task. So what this recommendation task has done is that basically it has gone through my data schema and based on that it has generated a certain rule set. So what I'm going to do is that let me open this rule set and if I open this rule set you can see here the laundry list of rule set based on different columns of labels. So this has try to generate possible uh, values uh, for uh, different possible, possible rules for different columns 
um, in my in my data set again I mean you can use as it is but most probably why you want to use as it is because this is a generally created rule set uh, what you can do is that you can go and modify this rule set based on your uh, your needs that I'm not going to do today to save time so what I will do now that my um, my rule sets uh, by rule set is generated and I'm going to use as it is what I can do is that I can simply uh, select this rule set and I can evaluate the rule set and when I do that it is going to basically evaluate my existing data based on these rules defined in the rule set and then it will give me the outcome whether my data quality meets my standard or not but in this case it's going to meet the standard because the rule set is generated by uh, an automated task and I have done no modification to it but let's see a success first okay let's start with the good thing so uh, we simply create on this uh, evaluate rule set and then um, I select uh, this is my rule set um, then I, I want to check whether I want to publish my uh, my uh, evaluation matrices to CloudWatch log you might want to have this option enabled if you want to look into events into CloudWatch log and based on that you want to um, and based on that you want to um, do a, a follow-up action then what I am role will uh, run this so I simply if I go to Dojo I can select one of the existing I am roles uh, and then uh, you can also select how many workers are you going to use to run this uh, rule set and then what will be the output location now this is optional but if I want I can provide um, so if I basically come over here if I go to DQ uh, and then if I copy this URI actually I can tell my um, I can tell uh, this is the location where I want to store the output of my data quality results so let's create on evaluate rule set which is going to run a job uh, and you can see the job has started and when this job will finish it will basically tell me whether um, my my data quality has passed based on the rule set or not and you can see detailed uh, detailed uh, view per call per uh, rule as well so let's wait till this data quality uh, task uh, finishes the job and then I will show you the outcome okay so you can see here that uh, my data quality task or evolution task has finished and again this rule set uh, it has completed uh, and what guess what my data quality rules has passed uh, I'm not surprised because uh, it, it was a generated rule set and I, I modified no data into that uh, no rule into that I can also so you can see there are 60 rules and all 60 rules are passed if I click on view over here uh, I can see per rule uh, which rules passed or which not in this case all 60 have passed if I go to my S3 bucket location, uh, refresh it, I should be able to see uh, if I go here for the year, month and day, I can see um, uh, my uh, data quality output written uh, in, a, uh, in the S3 bucket, which you can use for reporting or dashboarding purposes. Okay, so this was one uh, scenario where uh, I'm simply showing um, the, uh, the uh, data quality check at rest. Let's try to do a data quality check at uh, in move. So for that, I will go to Glue Studio, and in Glue Studio, I want to create a job. So what I will do is that I will say, I want to read from Glue Catalog and write to S3 Bucket, and let's create a job. So here, here we go. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it has uh, it has put simple read from data source apply some transformation and write to s3 bucket uh, before I start configuring I want to add one more action which is evaluate data quality as you can see over here so um, I can here first change the nodes so here I can say my parent is basically data quality data catalog table and then um, and here I will remove the parent of the apply mapping and then I go over here and say again my oops sorry here I say my um, parent is evaluate data quality so I put it I created a sequence over here 
So let's start configuring it. So let me. Um, oh, this becomes bigger. So first is uh, where do you want to read data from? So I want to read data from Dojo database, and in that Dojo database, I want to read from sales table. Okay, simple. Then evaluate data quality. So you can see here. Um, uh, you can uh, configure the data quality uh, here. Now, one thing which I'm missing here, uh, which is I should be able to use a rule set here, but I did not find any way I can, uh, like the rule set I created per previously, I should be able to simply use that rule set here, but looks like I cannot, um, which I would have loved to uh, do. Uh, but anyway, that's not a problem. So I can create my own rule set and I'm going to use uh, a rule set uh, uh, builder over here. Uh, so a rule builder over here. So I simply say, uh, let's talk about column count. So keep it simple for now. So say column count is 10. So I'm using default value. Now, we know that column count is 15, not 10. And I, I'm not changing it to 15 because I want this rule set to fail or this data quality evolution to fail. Um, so I want to say I want to publish results to CloudWatch log. Uh, I want to fail the job when the data quality fails. And fail job without loading target data? Yes, I don't want to load target data. Uh, but other option is that I can fail job, but I still load target data. But I say I don't want to load target data. I want to simply fail it. And then, um, what is the output of this particular node? Uh, so this is original data. I don't want to output any data quality results over here. So, and then as I mentioned here that I can also uh, put an output setting where I can put the S3 bucket, uh, bucket where I can output the data quality output. But for now, let's skip this step over here. So I have done this. Now my apply uh, mapping, I'm doing nothing. I'm simply uh, ta taking as it is my input data and writing to the, to the output. Now let's configure my uh, output locations. Let's say output location is um, JSON, um, uh, format is JSON, compression none, and I want to write it to the output folder. So here I go. I go to the output folder, copy URI, come back to editor, mention the location. Do not update data catalog, just nothing. So I think I'm all good. So. Now my job is configured, uh, well, my workflow is configured, business logic is configured. Let's configure some job details. So let's call this um, sales demo job. Then I um, select the IM role. And in this case, I'm going to use my same IM role. Again, you don't need to use the same IAM role, but I am doing it just to save time. Uh, Glue version has to be three, as I told you. This is the limitation right now. It works only with Glue version three. I'm not touching anything else, but I want to reduce number of retries to one, but I don't want it to like fail three times, uh, run three times, uh, because I, I know it's going to fail, because that's how I have configured the, and the, um, and the rule set to be. So I save it, okay should be successfully saving. Yeah, done. Now I am going to run it. So now this is a data quality check on move. So now when my glue job runs, uh, it should fail and it should fail because my data quality check has failed. So let's wait for status of the uh, glue job to come to a conclusion and then uh, we will talk again. Okay. So you can see that my glue job has failed. Voila, that's what we wanted to do. So we have been successful in failing the job. And then you can see here that saying the job failed due to failing data quality rules for uh, this particular node, okay? Now, uh, so this was an example how you can check data quality when in within the ETL glue job in the move, and then you can fail the job if your data quality is not meeting the meeting the requirement. So I don't know why it's, it's running again. It's supposed to run only once, but anyway. Uh, so. That was pretty much what I wanted to uh, show you today, that how you can use data quality uh, feature within uh, Glue uh, to uh, check quality of data both at rest and also in move. Um, 
and uh, i hope you like the video and if you like the video please click on the like button please subscribe to my channel i promise to come back again uh, with another video in a week's time and in the meantime please stay safe and have a nice day bye bye